I have a new wood stove from Lixada. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. So I've been watching this stove on eBay and some of the other sites where you can purchase it from China for some time. And what interested me about the stove was that it was very similar in design to one that's been put up by Tokes in titanium. And uh, I didn't want to pay the price for the Tokes titanium one, but I did see this one and it was only $15 Canadian, so I thought it was worth having a look at. Well, once I received it, I was really pleased to find out that it is actually a better design in many ways than the titanium one from Tokes, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But as well, the size of it was exactly what I was looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you some overview of the measurements of this thing and the weight of this thing, and then I'm going to show you why I bought this stove specifically. So the height as assembled as it is right now is seven and three quarter inches tall. Unassembled, it's only four and one eighth inches tall. It is four 0.5 or 4 and 1 half inches wide in diameter, and it weighs six and a half ounces. That's pretty light and pretty uh, pretty good size as well. Now I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to put it back in its stuff sack because that's how I'll be able to show you why I bought this stove. After that, we'll put it back together and we'll get a fire going in it. All right. So to take it apart, it comes in three pieces. That's it. Unassembled. Here's the stuff sack that it came in. Let me put it back in that. So there it is in its stuff sack and uh, you know it's still a very very light package but what is really special about this at least to me this is my camel wheel 1.2 liter pot that i've been carrying for some time and i've got some uh, a few reviews on this and obviously i like it because it's one of the first things i reach for when i go out in the woods but what i thought when i went to buy this is i wonder if it would fit down inside so i had done some measurements and when it got home and arrived i was pleased to see it does perfectly fits down inside of the Camelwell 1.2 liter pot just perfectly now not quite perfectly because when I put the lid on the lid won't fully go down into the pot but to be honest inside of a stuff sack that's not making any difference at all so it makes a nice compact arrangement now astute observers will also notice that this seems to be very similar in size to the uh, Solo Light with the uh, Solo 900 pot and the Solo Light stove. So at some point I am going to compare them, not today, but I just wanted to show you this is kind of like a less expensive version of the Solo stove. Does it work as well? well? Let's just talk about that for a minute. Okay, once again, here's the stove in its fully unassembled state. And watch how quickly this goes together in its, into an assembled state. Turn it upside down, let that part drop through. And we're done. That's all there is to assembling the stove. Now there is a set of crossbars that do come with it. I'll put the crossbars on. To be honest, I don't use them. I don't feel the need for them. If I was using something very small, uh, like a GSI cup or something like that, maybe. But there's the crossbars on it. And uh, the crossbars do give me maybe an eighth of an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch, uh, more clearance off of the top of the stove but to be honest it doesn't need it with all those holes let's just talk about the design a little bit and my philosophy on using it so like most of the stoves that Luxata puts out they didn't give this a name so what do you call this how would how is it designed I'm going to refer to it as the tower stove the Luxata tower stove for the obvious reasons of its narrow high dimensions but internally, it actually, I think, operates a bit like a wood gas stove and a little bit like a rocket stove. Now, I know the purists are going to argue with me that it's neither. And they're right. It's not absolutely either. But it does have elements of both. Let me explain. So, I'm going to set the base down. Pull the burn chamber out. And this is the pot stand. That's how I'm going to refer to the three pieces. So, the burn chamber actually looks quite small. But I want to bring it into the camera so you can see. At the top of the burn chamber, there are holes all the way around the top. And when this sits down inside the base, it acts like the secondary jets of a wood gas stove. There's the bottom of the stove, by the way, and you can see just how much air can come in through there. A uh, bit of a concern in terms of falling ash through if you're not sure of your foundation or your base underneath your stove, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. When you drop the burn chamber down inside the pot stand, like that you'll notice how much extra height that it gives and the large feed port on the front as well as the holes that go around the top of the pot stand 
the height of that pot stand actually increases the size of the burn chamber, the depth of it. So even though this is only about three, maybe three and a half inches tall, the burn chamber that is, you can get six inch sticks in here, uh, just about six inches, maybe five and a half inch sticks in here quite easily. So you can extend the amount of the burn chamber. Uh, now, what happens of course then is that you're not getting the full efficiency of a wood gas stove because some of the fire, or at least to begin with, a lot of the fire is burning above the secondary jet. So it's not getting the chance to introduce uh, Set a warmed heated air oxygen to the fire right at the level of the burn but it will eventually because whatever, however much you put in the two combination of the two it is going to burn down into the lower chamber and work much more effectively in fact when I go to demonstrate how I use it you'll see how much that works I said a bit of a rocket stove and that's because of the narrow tall height of this I find that with the airflow coming in through the bottom of the stove and in through the jets that there's a chimney effect created and that's one of the hallmarks of a rocket stove is that chimney effect it actually pulls and draws air up and I think it works quite effectively okay so let's put it back in its base do I have any concerns about it? Yes, yes I do. It is tall and it is narrow. Four and a half inches is about the same diameter as the uh, solar light stove, but of course this is much taller than a solar light, which means when you add a pot on top of this, which is top heavy, that you have the risk of having a tip over. And when I demonstrate this, I'll show you how that could happen and what I do to avoid it happening. Now, I also did say that I think there are some improvements of this stove on this stove over the Tox Titanium. One of which is the Tox Titanium stove has holes at this level, or excuse me, sorry, in the burn chamber at this level. It introduces extra air, but I think it takes away from some of the wood gas uh, qualities of the stove. I, I can't be sure of that, of course, because I don't have the titanium stove from, from uh, Tokes. One thing I can tell you, however, is the way this is designed, and I'll turn the stove upside down, you can see this is the bottom of the burn chamber. From the bottom of the burn chamber to the base of the stove itself is about one inch. So you get one inch clearance with, of the burn chamber off of the ground. That's not true of the tokes. The tokes almost completely touches the ground. So if you're setting this on the earth, or the tokes on the earth, and you put the weight of a kettle on, you could put the bottom of the burn chamber right down on the earth. Now, any issues of, of starting fires aside, because of course if you're on a rock that's not an issue, airflow is an issue. So you've cut off all your airflow if you push that down to the earth. So this gives me some extra clearance for the air to be drawn up in through the bottom of the burn chamber. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up and we'll get ready to make a fire in this so I can heat some water for coffee. All right, as you can see, I am set up on a granite shelf here, rock, so I'm not concerned about what's underneath the stove when I go to light it. I also took a stone and just set it up beside where the stove is going to be because there is a breeze coming in this direction and I just wanted to give it a bit of a windscreen. Stoves, wood stoves, all wood stoves, all stoves for that matter, work better when they have some protection from the wind if it is all windy. So here this is the uh, stove packed up in the Camoville 1.2 liter uh, stove or pot and let me just take it out one more time and assemble it because there is something I wanted to show you as I went along Set the pot aside So what I didn't show you originally was that you can also store an alcohol stove down inside with some alcohol I have both in plastic bags But there's the stove in its unassembled state now. Let me quickly put it together. So you reach in And there it is, all ready to go, and that's all there is to it. Now, before I go to to build a fire in this and show you how I, I, I like to do it anyway, uh, I just want to show how I would use an alcohol stove with this setup. So, I would just keep... The only part of the, the stove I would use for this is the, the pot stand itself. It's designed for holding a pot, so why not? It is a little tall, so what I would end up doing is putting my alcohol stove on top of the lid and then that brings it to about an inch and a half inch and three quarters from the bottom of the pot so it's not an ideal spacing but it is much it's not bad you know it works it works so uh, and I have used it I played with it in a number of ways I wanted to see if it would work better in this way or better in this way and it does work better like this because uh, there is a need for some heat to vent otherwise it tends to very quickly uh, 
subdue the flames because there's just no flow for the air to come through. So that's how I'd set it up with an alcohol stove. Okay, let's get it set up for burning wood. Put the stove aside. So I mentioned the, the burn chamber itself with the holes around the top as secondary jets. So what I have found that seems to work really well is if I can cut wood to fit in here. So I preload the bottom half of the stove. I don't know that it's necessary to do this. I just find I get a, do get a good burn, good uh, sustained burn like this. And that's plenty. So you can see I've got quite a few pieces down in size. Ah, some are a little tall, some are a little short, but that's okay. They'll work just fine because by the time it gets down to burning those, the, it'll start to drop down below the, the height of the secondary jets. Now, there's still a lot of room here. So this is where I create another type of a light. So I'm going to put in or another type of a burn. So this one will be kind of a bottom-up burn. And what will happen is it'll draw a lot of air in through, and then the fire and the coals will start to drop down into the bottom load. So I'll put a little bit of birch bark in here, some very small sticks in the top, just to get a little burn going. All right. You can preload it like I'm doing now, or you can get it lit and then start adding sticks in through the top. And that's enough to get a good burn going right off of the top, and I'll get that going momentarily. See if I can't get this lit with my ferrocerium rod, piece of birch bark that is. And we'll get the stove going. All right. Ferrocerium rod. Swiss Army knife. That looks pretty good. And all I'm trying to do at this point is just get the birch bark that's inside of the wood stove lit. Give it a sec and it'll start to catch as you'll see. And once it has caught, I'll put the uh, pot of water on. So while that is starting to ignite, bring my pot over here. I thought it's worth knowing as well that uh, I did try this with my 12 centimeter zebra. And this stove, in its compact state, actually fits better in the Zebra than it does in the Camelwell. They're both the same diameter, both pots, but the Zebra is just a little taller, and of course the lid is raised as opposed to um, down, you know, prep, depressed down inside the pot. So, if you don't have one of these Camelwells, but you do have a 12 centimeter Zebra, use that, of course. So I can actually, you can see now, there's a, a good flame going. It'll take a minute before it drops down into the wood in the bottom, but that's okay because that's, uh, I can start making use of the flame as it sits right now. So here's what I want to show you. What kind of an issue we may have, you may run into with this stove. You see the wind. Okay, so. We have a tall, narrow stove with the heaviest part at the top, and this can be somewhat unsteady. So I've uh, learned a couple of things about doing this. If we get to a point when most of the preload starts to burn down and you want to add extra wood to the fire, I would highly recommend taking a stick or something, holding the pot, or if it's not hot, like mine's not hot yet, and then toss your pieces in. You don't want to risk bumping the stove. I mean, it's, it's not like it's absolutely going to drop right off and fall, and fall uh, over, but uh, just for a little extra security, you can do better just by holding the top of the pot and uh, stabilizing the stove. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out. Had I not been on a hard rock surface, I do have, now where did I put them? I have to reach for them, excuse me. 
I do have a couple of things that I could have used to help stabilize the stove. So what I have here are tent pegs that I shortened down just a little bit. And had this been a soft surface, I could have driven these tent pegs into the earth so that that hook would then hook inside the base of the stove on either side, and that would have helped stabilize the stove as well. Now, the other thing that I would also do, I haven't mentioned before, if this was anything other than a rock surface, I'd be a little concerned about the coals falling through onto the earth. I do have a bag of water here, just in case, not that I am concerned, but uh, it's always a good practice to have water nearby when you're working a wood stove. But a little piece of aluminum flashing, cut to the right size and diameter underneath the stove, will we'll keep the coals from going into the duff in the earth below. So that uh, fits nicely in the bottom of the little stuff sack and doesn't take up any room. Okay, so the stove the, is burning well. As you can see, it drafts very, very well. And it won't take long to bring this water to a boil. Let's see where we are. Already got bubbles. So that was only two, three minutes. Nice flame inside. And with that preload, this will burn for an extended period of time. Now, I've only got two cups of water in here, so it's not a lot. I'm not going to time this, but uh, I will... Uh, it will give you an idea how long it will burn. So what I'm going to do now is cut away and get ready for when this comes to a boil so I can make myself some coffee. Look at that. Oh, man. Okay, so I've, I've enjoyed my cup of coffee, and uh, I let the stove burn out. Actually, the stove burned a lot longer than was necessary to bring that little bit of water to a boil. So I, I could have cooked or heated a lot more water than that or used it to heat up some lunch or something as well, but the, all I wanted today was a cup of coffee. But what I wanted to do, there's still some hot coals in the bottom of the stove, but what I wanted to do before I close the video out was to lift the stove off of the spot where it was resting, and you can see, that's it. Just very, very little ash, and uh, a little warm, yeah, to the touch. So not a lot of coals or ash did fall through, probably due to, in, in part to the size of the pieces of the wood that I was using inside, but you can see it did get hot enough that, as a precaution, it's a good idea if you weren't, if I wasn't on rock like I am here, that I would put something down that, like that little piece of aluminum uh, flashing. Now, I could have just as easily had a piece of aluminum foil or something else uh, that I could unfold and put down on the ground as well, but uh, this worked out okay. Well, it's, it, it packs away nicely is the reason why I like to carry that. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you, and uh, we'll close up in a second with a few, a few closing thoughts. Okay, a few closing comments on the Lixada tower stove. At least that's what I'm calling it, is the tower stove. Uh, you know, it worked well for me. It works extremely well. I think the fact that there's a combination of wood gasification taking place as well as a chimney effect that goes along with a rocket stove, those things together make this quite a performer. Yes, it is a little tall, it is a little narrow, but if you're precautious and you take precautions, you can keep from tipping over anything you may have on top. So, And that's true, you have to be around, careful around any stove, and it could happen with any stove, but you, this one, yes, it's, it's a little tippy, so you do have to be a little cautious around it. You know, what occurred to me when I was working with it, and it was using that larger stone as a windscreen, that had I used that and another stone at its base, I could have pinned the stove between the two of them and given it much more stability that way. So that would be an option, especially when where you're on a, a hard surface like I am here, this granite rock face, and I wasn't able to drive the stakes in to hold it to get hold it from the bottom. Yeah, good performance stove. The price was right, absolutely. At $15 Canadian, I'm sure it'll be less expensive for my American friends, and I will put the link where I purchased this in the show notes below. Let me know if you have any experience with this stove, what you think of it, any thoughts on, on, what, on keeping it more stable than it is now, or, or anything else about the stove, I guess. 
yeah, good performance stove. I think it'll fit well within my kit. I like that it fits inside of the Zebra 12 centimeter as well as my Camo Will 1.2 liter. There is a larger version of this stove, by the way. I don't know the measurements of it, but I'm sure it would probably fit well inside of a 14 centimeter Zebra, giving you something roughly the equivalent size of the Solo Titan in size, if not in performance. I will be doing comparison tests between this stove and the solar light just to see how well they perform side by side and I'll bring that to you in a video. Okay, that's all I have to say about the Lexata Tower stove for now. If you have any comments on this stove then please add them to the show notes below. Otherwise, get out in the woods, take that path less traveled, it'll make all the difference. Bye for now.